What a beautiful day to talk about freedom and human rights. I'm very glad we all are free here today. So many things to be excited about because this happened in our lifetime, literally. <laughs> My dear leader, Kim Jong-un, met with the leader of free world. Uh, I think a lot of people did have thoughts, but some people were so very excited. This might be the beginning of peace. But is it? Um, in this meeting, it was a political show, but politics should never be a show because it affects our lives, because that's it affecting North Korean people's lives, at least. In this meeting, in this show, they decided that not to talk about human rights because our life is not important enough to talk about. Rather, they decide to praise each other, that Trump was impressed that how much Kim Jong-un loves us, loves his people, and they just praised each other all the whole time. So here I am today to talk about the people that was forgotten by our leaders, 25 million of North Korean people like myself. This is my people. In this 21st century, we have electricity. We have, we gone to the moon. We did so many things with this technology innovation. This is how we live in North Korea. We don't have 24 hours electricity. I never even heard the word AC before. <laughs> uh, here's more. Even the soldier lives were not respected. Nobody allowed to be human in North Korea at this point. Our existence is only purpose or to, for us to be alive is to serve the regime, to die for the revolution. That's why we are being taught every single day. A lot of people are starving, died from starvation, and this starvation also led me to escape too. Growing up as a child, I ate grasshoppers, dragonflies, but don't worry, it's good for your diet. <laughs> Seriously, try it out. <laughs> That's we meant to survive. What gets me about North Korea is that North Korea is not a poor country. We are not poor. This regime, there's missiles, really expensive missiles. This dictator chose not to feed us because he wants to control us. Starvation is a tool in North Korea. No one needs to die in North Korea from not having food. Um, as a young girl, I went to school like everyone did. Without my hungry stomach in school, I didn't learn about evolution, history, math, or anything. I learned about the word that my teachers taught me, and this was my word. American ambassadors, you are here today. <laughs> yeah, who knew? Uh, I learned in classroom, seeing these portraits of American ambassadors, how they tortured us, how they killed us. What a monsters they were. I didn't even know that you had warm blood like myself. I thought you were like cold-blooded evil. And I had no internet. How do I go to internet and search on Google if it's true or not? I have no outside information. I just believed. More, Americans were burying us, our children. And like that, with the American invasion, we would be like this. And my God came in, my son, my dear leader, he came, saved us, freed us from Americans, and gave us life. Because of him, we have nothing to envy in this world. We are safe. This is our world view. Never seen the map of the world. I didn't even know how many countries in the world existed. All I knew was our enemies. It's like 1984 by George Orwell, enemies. 
and our brother who is protecting us. Uh, in school, as a child, I did not learn, I mean, play with the Barbie dolls. <laughs> I played these games. This child is like well dressed in Pyongyang, but we couldn't afford those materials or those paintings in the countryside. I had to build a snowman, the big nose, and bring the hot water and pour it. What happens to the snowman? It disappears. Then I cheered with my like, friends. Hooray, American ambassadors are gone. That was my play as a child. But despite all that, North Korean people are resilient. We created the black market. Even though governments controlled us, and millions of people died from starvation in the 90s, including my mother, my uncle, and my friends. We created this market, and it provides all the goods that we need to survive. But this market didn't only provide us with the goods. It provided us with outside information. As a young girl, I watched Titanic. I mean, who doesn't love DiCaprio, right? As a girl, <laughs> let's be honest. I was really worried when I saw the movie. I was like, what happened to him? And that was really the first thing I checked after I escaped. Is he alive? <laughs> Did he get killed? <laughs> Glad he's alive. But he doesn't want to meet me yet. So hope somebody here helped me to meet him, OK? <laughs> he changed my world. I mean, this movie gave me a taste of freedom. How can a man die for love? Love doesn't exist in North Korea. How a movie can be made out of a human story? Later, I also watched these kind of movies. Right? It really gave me a wrong view of American men. <laughs> you know, seriously, when I watch like James Bond and this man, I landed in New York City. I was like, what happened to the humanity? <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> you gotta re repent a little bit on that. <laughs> so, these movies are changing the young people, especially in North Korea today. We fantasize Americans. You are not monsters anymore. We adore DiCaprio as a young girl because they are human beings. They get moved by human stories like us. Uh, but this is still the reality of North Korea, the darkest place on Earth. In that darkness, I lived in the northern part of North Korea, so I was able to see light coming from China at night. I had no idea what would happen to me if I escaped, but I was so hungry. I knew that if I don't escape, I was going to die from starvation. So. I escaped the light. At the age of 13, in 2007, I crossed the frozen river for a bowl of rice. Once I got there, the reality was worse than North Korea. Chinese authority catch us and sent us back to North Korea to get killed. So human traffickers set us like dogs, pets. The first thing I saw was my mother being raped by a broker. She was sold for less than $100, and I was sold for another man to over $200. That was my price. You can buy me now in China. Um, with that, as you can see, this is North Koreans try to get inside the embassy of North South Korea in China, but Chinese soldiers catching them. So what I had to do? Escaping China was going to Mongolia, crossing the Gobi Desert in the minus 40 degrees. In 2009, I crossed desert to Mongolia. And there are a lot of other paths that North Koreans taking this moment to free themselves. That can take miles, thousands of miles. They swim, they cross. And we, luckily with my mother, we took the Mongolian path but one of our friends who took the path to Thailand, she was eaten by the crocodile, and she never made it. So many people never get to make it. That's why there are only over 200 North Korean people in America right now. That's why you don't get to meet them often. 
now I am free, and there is a way we can change this. Often people think uh, changing the world is something grand. You gotta do so many things. But it can just simply starting by giving away an uh, unused flash drive you have. Because someone right now in North Korea can see outside information and dream of the world. Uh, my problem with the representation of North Korean people in the media is this, that we are all brainwashed robots. Can you tell this is North Korean person right now? This well-dressed woman in Pyongyang. Obviously, most of the people in the country are starving because the regime doesn't want to feed them. But elite people at least changing because they see these movies and they start think for themselves. And look at this couple. This is a person look like us in North Korea right now. They are all not like marching in the square and you know swear that they are gonna die for the dictator. Uh, I am at Columbia University right now. I'm only 24 years old, but I am married to an American bastard. <laughs> He's a wife, and I have a six-month-old son. I, I cannot believe this happened to me. The person that I learned how to hate from my very birth, that we share humanity. At Columbia, when I introduced myself, I say, hey, I'm from North Korea, my name is Yeonmi Park, and often they think, I said, I am from North Carolina. <laughs> and I said, no, 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 I'm not from North Carolina, I'm from North Korea. And a lot of people, the first thing they say to me, oh my God, you look just like me. Yeah, you look just like you. The people who's being punished for their birthplace right now, the girls right now in China being sold for $300, they are like us. That's why human rights is not a concept. The free people like us, we are today. We have to speak for them, these people because who will speak for us when we are not free? And I'm not here to ask you to become an activist or anything. I learned these concepts in this freedom, ideas of the people passionate about global warming. They want to change. They want to make the equality. They care about animals' rights. And we have people who don't even know they have rights as a human beings. That's why here today, we can make a little room in our heart for these people who can have rights like us. So I am grateful out of your busy time in this beautiful fall, you came to hear about stories like mine and all other people that can be easily forgotten and the media usually and doesn't talk about. So I hope after our day here, human rights is gonna be important enough for our leaders to talk about. Thank you for being here. I'm very grateful right here. Thank you.